Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So here we are in the dining room. We're actually working on the dining room floor. Now, if you dolls remember in the first episode of uh, our August 1st uh, video, I talked about extending the template to make the dining room floor come all the way out to the edge of the base so that the dolls will have room for extra table for food and room to dance. And so this piece that your my hand is on is showing you the extended piece that comes all the way out into more or less the hallway or base part of the dollhouse. So I just kind of wanted to show you before I went back to my table. So now here I am at the table. So if you wanted to know how I make my parquet floors dolls, I actually make them with shingles. Yes, parquet floors from shingles dolls. Now I do cut the little um, octagon part off of the ends of the shingles and try to make them as square as possible. Sometimes they don't cut really, really straight. So I will have to sand the edges. Be aware dolls, this is a very tedious process. You will need to plan ahead your design. You're gonna have to lay out your template. You're gonna have to make markings where the center is. You may even want to make a couple sample designs before you start because shingles aren't cheap. <laughs> I definitely think it's helpful if you look at some patterns or images of parquet floors for your inspiration before starting this project so you'll have an idea of which way you're going to go. Now if you can see here with my easy cutter, I kind of lined it up where it's just below the octagon shaped portion of the shingle. Now dolls, the amount of shingles you'll need will depend on how big your floor is. Now my floor, including that extended portion, is going to be about 14 by 14. And if you can kind of see, I made a mark so I would know where to cut it and I cut a little bit ahead of that so that if I have something to shave off, I'd rather it be too big than too short. And I will advise you dolls to don't throw those little octagon pieces away. Keep them in a little sandwich bag because they actually could come in handy for another project. Mm -hmm. So here dolls, I got tired of cutting shingles and decided to go ahead and create my border. Most of the parquet designs I've seen, the floors always have a border. So my idea was to do a border around the whole perimeter of the template and miter the corners to kind of add to the design and the symmetry of the floor. After I measured and marked where my miter should be, you can see my pencil marks, I lined up my easy cutter to just make a nice score or indention in the wood. And after I scored it really good, I'm going to trim it off with my craft blade to get a nice clean cut. And usually, dolls, I don't have to do much sanding if I use the scoring and then the cutting method with the blade. So, dolls, here I'm going to show you that I added my border. I just added some Gorilla Wood glue to the back of the border. Now, I did do my miter cuts, and I'm going to tell you ahead of time, my miters are not perfectly straight. But again, dolls, no worries, because you know I'm going to add a little wood putty so you saw that first miter, and here's the next one. It's a little sad, but it's no worries. Again, the wood putty will take care of all that. This is another one of those instances, dolls, where things may look a little pre-K, but you have to trust the process. Because even those spaces that you see in between my parquet floor, I'm going to fill those with putty as well. But that's a little bit later on in the process. So let's go ahead and move on. Now, the best way to find the center of your floor is to actually create an X, like a diag diagonal X in the middle of the floor and find the center and then work your way out. So here I'm showing you where I actually added my two wood sticks to kind of keep me centered. So I will work my way out from the center and you see I'm adding my shingle squares inside of each corner of my diagonal, which I believe to be the center of my floor. Now dolls, this is not an exact science when it comes to me 
and doing parquet floors. Yeah, I wasn't really great in geometry and I really don't like math that much. So be forewarned, dolls. Everything that I'm doing is more or less theory. We'll find out as we get to the edges of the floor. But if you're mathematically fluent and meticulous with your cuts, you probably have a better chance of having really straight lines and super parallel lines. So we're going to see dolls. But one thing for sure, we're going to have fun. But either way, the concept, you definitely can use it and make it your own. Be as neat, precise, and mathematically correct as you need to be. So now, dolls, although I wasn't working off an image, I did have an idea of what I want my floor to look like, at least in the center. So in this next frame, I show you the beginning of my pattern, and I actually want to border each of those four squares and then spread out from there. But I do need to allow these to set and dry, so I'm going to weight them down with my one, two, three blocks and give them an opportunity to set. So while that was setting, I was measuring out what I would need for my outside border. And when I say measure, doll, you know what I mean, theoretically measure. I'm determining how long I need that border piece to be to enclose that four square box that I've already created. And again, dolls, this portion is pretty tedious. So take your time if you have to get up and walk away and come back, do that. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this project alone took me about a week. So don't create unrealistic expectations for yourself, dolls. Be patient with yourself while you're learning. And if you make a mistake, stop, correct the mistake before you move on, or it'll throw all the rest of your floor off. Keep in mind, the worst case scenario is that the floor will be a little crooked. And then you just have to make it again or keep it and just cover it with a rug. <laughs> now, I want you dolls to take note that as I'm working, when I complete an area, I weight it with my one, two, three blocks. You cannot allow these shingles to dry without being weighted. They will curl up. Now, if you don't have one, two, three blocks, you can use a handy piece of granite or tile if you have it, or even books, a heavy box, or multiple books, and maybe some cans of food, something that'll weight it down and make it lay flat. Now, these are convenient because they're small, and I can cover the small areas while I'm working, but dolls, use what you have. Now, dolls, you can see you really don't have to even look closely, but I do have some irregular cuts. So periodically, I have to trim off the edges of the parts that don't really fit. And like I said, the more accurately you cut them in the beginning, possibly the less cutting you'll have to do as you assemble. But this is just my method, dolls. Definitely be as precise as you need to be to get the desired result. And I lay my border down next to the piece that I'm working on and try to get it as close as possible. Now that one is a little bit off and it's a little bit more off than I want it to be. But if the glue is still soft, you can kind of shift it to cause it to adjust to what you need it to be, but you don't want to adjust it too much where it'll make the square off, if you know what I mean. And again, to fill in those gaps in the end, I will be using wood putty and I will show you that dolls. Don't be discouraged because it looks a little wacky while you're cutting and assembling the wood pieces. You're trying to get the basic structure together and again it does look very pre-k. The You have a lot of gaps, there appears to be some unevenness, but trust me dolls, after it's sanded and we putty the gaps, it's going to look fabulous. Now, again, dolls, because I d wasn't working from a pattern or a picture or anything, I was actually making up my design as I go. This is actually not recommended under any circumstances. It makes it a little bit more challenging, but it, it's kind of my way, dolls. 
And so after I got to the point where I had boxed in the four squares, I realized I liked the way that looked and I wanted the squares or the sticks to go out further toward the end. So I hadn't decided this at this point, but after looking at it, I decided to extend it. And here I'm just trimming off the edge of one of the shingles that went over too far. I actually tore my template, but no worries, dolls. It's just a brown paper bag. You can reinforce the template from underneath if you have to. Now at this point, dolls, I had to be very, very conscious of my symmetry because now I have broken the length of my borders and I'm re-extending them. If I had been thinking earlier, I wouldn't have cut them in the first place and I would have been guaranteed that they'd be straight. So at this point, if you do something like this, keep checking and using your ruler to make sure that things are as square and level as possible when you're lining your, extending your line. Also note, dolls, that as I laid my shingles, I tried to lay them in opposing directions to create a shadow-like optical illusion, if you know what I mean, dolls. Actually, the illusion takes place in the staining process, but we'll talk about that later, dolls. I'm so excited. But dolls, I just had to stop and see how it fit and kind of get an idea of how it was turning out. I'm really tickled about the way it looks and I think the dolls are going to love it for the party. Now dolls, don't judge it or critique it too soon because we have a lot of work to do on it. But I just wanted you to see it inside the room for a moment and up close. Let's get back to the table and finish up. So dolls, I had an idea to do something a little bit different with the design. See, this is what happens when you don't have a design already set up. You start to get bright ideas in the middle of an idea. Now I had these wood pile, wood tiles, and I thought they were really nice. They were really smooth and they were perfectly square. So I figured they would be a really nice option to do in the far corners of the dance floor. And so I decided to put a border in between them and trim off the edges. And I thought the pattern looked really nice. Now dolls, be aware in this process, there will be moments where you may get frustrated or even bored. Again, take time to step away, come back to your project, allow it to dry, tape it down, but make sure you have fun. Don't um, pressure yourself or make this a chore or something hard or grueling like you have some deadline to meet. Don't do that to yourself. Enjoy the process, take your time, and if you need to come back to it a day or so, it's okay. You're not planning a party at the end of the month. <laughs> now, I must tell you, dolls, when I started to add these larger wooden tile pieces, it was a real struggle because as they absorb the glue, the corners begin to curl, and I had to do a lot to hold them down to keep them the the corners from curling so i needed masking tape to hold it down as well as the one two three blocks and the granite there was a point that i got so frustrated with the large tiles i actually wanted to rip them all out but i powered through dolls i had to calm myself down and i taped it and weighted it and it started to look better but I just tell you these things, dolls, so you'll be forewarned if you run into times or portions of your project that frustrate you or make you just want to rip the whole thing up. It happens to the best of us. But in the end, I was really happy with the tiles and the floor itself. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, dolls, you know we do have a couple more videos for the original Dollhouse Tour. And we are definitely going to have a part two to this video. So stay tuned for that as well. 
And I want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers and even those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. We have a lot of work to do in the Roman House Dial House before the end of the month where the big celebration begins. So I'm looking forward to seeing you dolls on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.